That's my secret cat. I'm always angry. <laughs> Alright. I ran out of patience. On the roof! Hey everyone, Cat Cat, big fan of Spider-Man. Avengers! Assemble. Hello, Peter. Hello and welcome back to the Infinity Saga and Beyond MCU Fan Podcast. My name is Jordan Wiegand, and with me today is no one doing Hawkeye Episode 6 Review Solo. And we are going to be talking Episode 6, So This Is Christmas, directed by Reese Thomas, written by Jonathan Igla and Eliza Clement. Release date December 22nd, 2021 on Disney+. Plus. The synopsis of this says, Clint and Kate's partnership is tested as they face the consequences of exposing the conspiracy. This was about an hour long episode, which was like the longest of Hawkeye so far. And it was a lot of fun. I, I thought this finale was was good. I mean, I saw some people complaining about it. I feel like that's just kind of been the thing. Uh, every finale for an MCU show on Disney Plus has been complaints about it. Either they're not being wrapped up, you know, to people's pleasure, I guess, or or not. But for me, I, I really enjoyed uh, how this was wrapped up, and I thought they gave enough time to wrap everything up. I mean, I think, you know, some people are almost still thinking of these as movies. I mean, we might get a second season of the show. We are getting an Echo show that's going to focus on uh, Maya Lopez's character. So that kind of changes some of the things, I think, on how, you know, this is going to be ultimately judged, um, I guess. But we're going to be talking all about it in detail here, so you know, we pick up kind of right where we left off uh, with Eleanor meeting with the kingpin Wilson Fisk, uh, and she's trying to break off the partnership. That's what you know. We didn't see any sound last time. It's just a picture of kingpin with Eleanor. This time we're getting the sound. We're getting it from Eleanor's point of view here. That Eleanor is trying to break off the partnership with kingpin. And it, like, starts as them, like, watching it, I think, if I remember right. Like, <clears throat> Clint and Kate are watching a recording of it, and then it kind of goes into what Eleanor, you know, we're not just watching grainy footage. We're then seeing, you know, regular high-def footage from Eleanor's perspective here as she's going in to break it off. We see Wilson Fisk enter with the cane <clears throat> at a point here, and, you know, he's just... Absolutely menacing. Vincent D'Onofrio is great as Kingpin. I'm so glad they brought him back from uh, from Daredevil on Netflix. Um, so yeah, being able to see him once again was fantastic. And D'Onofrio saying, you know, they were treating this as if it is the Daredevil version of Kingpin, meaning that from what we know so far. All that stuff still counts. Now, the way I kind of expect Marvel to handle this is not directly mention events from the first three seasons of Daredevil and the Defenders and the other Netflix shows, but also not override anything. So, like, meaning, you know, if Daredevil is going to meet up with Kingpin, there's going to be a pre-established history there. That's going to be alluded to. I don't think we're going to get, you know, them being introduced for the first time. I I think they're going to kind of play that stuff has happened. We're not going to talk about it, but it's there. For people that don't watch Daredevil on Netflix, you can jump in and you won't miss a beat. For people that watched Daredevil on Netflix, you kind of already know where these characters have been. I think that's the perfect way to kind of handle this. And I think that's probably the way they're going to be going with it. Um, 
But just the love that Vincent D'Onofrio has for this character, you know, seeing all the interviews he was giving after this finale, and he was constantly over the Christmas holiday retweeting the articles, um, you know, doing so much press about this, constantly saying what a big fan he is of that he actually picked out the Hawaiian shirt outfit from because uh, the the cover of Spider Man Family Business, which has a Kingpin storyline in it. Um, that cover is of uh, Kingpin with the Hawaiian shirt and the white jacket and, and stuff like that. So he said it says his you know screensaver on his desktop and all that kind of stuff. So he, he seems to really enjoy the character. He wants to continue playing the character. And we'll talk about if that's feasible or not with where this episode kind of left it. Um, but that's what we're going to be getting into here as, as well as we get further into it. But during this conversation, we do learn that Eleanor has killed Armand and that she framed Jack. So, but at this point, she wants to be kind of out of this. She wants to go and have a, you know, continue her family life, uh, you know, and and Clint kind of mentions this to Kate after watching the recording that, you know, Kingpin's not usually the type of guy that will let people go. Um, if you're in this world with him, uh, you're in this world with him until uh, you you die, pretty much, or Kingpin dies, right? Um, he, he's not going to be somebody that just lets you walk away willingly. He says when you're done. And he still needs Eleanor. He still, you know, he. <laughs> there's a way he mentions this. I, I totally forget the, way, the wording he uses, but, you know, he's saying... You know, like she's and she's just going to quit as if this is some, yeah, I forget the wording he had used in that line. I should have wrote it down. But, you know, when he's complaining to um, Kazi about Eleanor, you know, it was just very, very funny the way he was kind of pissed off. And uh, just, again, D'Onofrio elevates the material so well. Um, and then we learned that, yeah, Jack Duquesne had nothing to do with this. And he's actually going to have a really good, I think, closure to his arc in this uh, episode where he is going to, you know, kind of be able to get a chance to show off some of his swordsman stuff. You know, he has a character in the comics named the Swordsman. We've kind of talked about that before. But uh, he's, he's going to get a chance later on to kind of show that off. But we learned that he didn't kill Armand. That butterscotch was a red herring, kind of like I thought it was, and that ultimately Eleanor was the thing that Kate would have to overcome in the storyline. So, uh, you know, on Christmas Eve, that's where we're at now. Kate and Clint are going to attend Eleanor's holiday party, and this is where Kate's going to try to confront her mom. But now she's she now, of course, knows that uh, Kingpin is going to send people after her. So she's trying to just get her mom out of harm's way at this point. And, you know, Kazi is uh, sitting up in this in this sniper, you know, on like a rooftop or in another building. You know, he is trying to aim into that building and uh, kill Eleanor he then sees that Clint and Kate are there, so he's thinking, you know, I think he says Christmas came early um, when all three of them are there. And he's thinking, you know, his lights, you know, his eyes are lighting up. He's like, all right, I'm going to be able to take out all three of them today, and I'm going to look really good for my boss, Wilson Fisk. It doesn't play out that way for Kazi. And in fact, Kazi, who is known as uh, the clown uh, in in comics, it seems like he is dead at the end of this episode and we'll kind of get to that part later on here. But so, you know, Kate's going to confront her mom here and what we learn in that original video, it's kind of hinted that Eleanor's husband and Kate's dad is who owed money to Wilson Fisk. We're not really sure why we don't really know why, but that that is where we are here. So this gets to Eleanor telling that to Kate. Now, what we also have set up during all of this is the LARPers and Grills 
are there in the building. A lot of them, again, are first responders, so they at least have some sort of knowledge on how to handle this stuff. So I thought that was really good way to kind of tie that in. And, you know, they can kind of handle themselves here, but they're, they're kind of undercover. They got the earpieces. They're talking with Kate. They're talking with Clint. They kind of understand what's going on here. Um, Clint does see the red, you know, the red laser sights on somebody. He's able to, you know, jump out of the way before he gets shot. And then kind of mass chaos (laughs) ensues here where Eleanor kind of slips away. Kate's looking for her. Yelena walks in. She's looking for Clint. Clint is, you know, what, I guess a few stories down doing something else. Uh, Chasing Kazi, I think, uh, or, you know, uh, Kazi is still across the street at that point. But, you know, everything's starting to get just mayhem. You have the LARPers and you have Grills, you know, trying to help out with all of that stuff. Uh, and then the tracksuit mafia shows up. And man, do they have a lot of members of the tracksuit mafia, as we'll see later on when we get to the Rockefeller Center part. But it just felt like waves and waves, like when you're playing uh, like the Spider Man PS4 game or the Arkham Batman games, where you're like, oh, geez, there's more. There's just another wave coming. Like you're like, you know, wave 10 out of 30. And you're like, geez, I got to defeat another 20 waves of, you know, uh, Fisk's bad guys, you know, in, in the. Uh, in the Spider-Man game. That's how it kind of felt like at that part. But uh, so, uh, you know, Maya Lopez is going to show up at some point and she's going to take out Kazi later on here. She's going to get an argument. You know, Kazi pretty much says he can't leave this life. This is the lifestyle that he, you know, that he would want. And he's going to end up, he's going to end up getting killed by Maya here, it looks like. Anyway. So then, you know, you have Kate looking for Eleanor while Clint is then eventually confronted by Yelena. And um, before we get there, though, Clint, you know, jumps out the jumps out the window. He's going to land in the tree at Rockefeller Center uh, by the NBC building. He's going to get stuck in the tree and Kate is going to cut the tree down pretty much and and get Clint out of there, which is um, how he ends up on the ice. And that's when Yelena shows up and they start duking it out. And, you know, Clint tells her the truth. He does say, you know, the truth is we know it. We know the truth. We saw Endgame. We understand. Yelena does not understand it. And it's funny that she doesn't, honestly, because with how Nat is I just rewatched Black Widow the other day on Christmas Eve um, with how Nat acts throughout that whole movie. Nat is ready to sacrifice herself for a lot of things during that whole movie. And it is interesting that I I know Yelena probably doesn't want to think that doesn't want to think that her sister gave up. She wants to be able to defeat somebody and say, you're the reason my sister died. You know, that's in her mindset. You're the reason why my sister is dead. So once I take you out, I can feel better that she's gone. And that is kind of what I think is where Yelena is coming from here. But we know that that's not true. We know that Nat did sacrifice herself. So that way Clint could be with his family when they come back. And, you know... It makes sense, you know, as somebody that, you know, has seen Nat's progression through the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it makes sense that she would do that. I still see a lot of people upset that she did that, saying that she shouldn't have sacrificed herself, um, you know, all that kind of stuff on Twitter and all that. But I really do think it fit really well with, with where her story was going, and... I think it pays off very well here when eventually Yelena realizes he is telling the truth that Clint's not lying. You know, Clint says that he wishes it wasn't true. He wishes he had been able to stop Nat from doing that, that he fought her for it. And eventually Yelena comes around and will leave. You know, she gets up and leaves. And then, uh, you know, Kate's going to, meet up with uh, Clint on the ice. And that's when more of the tracksuit mafia is going to come out here. 
and it is a messy, messy fight. Now, I'm trying to remember the way that this is. I, I think before, yeah, so before all this is where we get the confrontation with Kingpin. Um, so, you know, Kingpin is going to try to stop Eleanor from escaping, but Kate is going to uh, arrive and end up kind of like distracting uh, Kingpin a bit. Kingpin is going to toss her around like a rag doll. It's really cool the, how powerful this version of Wilson Fisk is. Just a strong guy who's, you know, take he takes an arrow in the chest and just breaks it off. He doesn't care. He is going to throw her around. He's toying with her. Uh, he gets hit by a car when Eleanor pushes him through the drywall of the car into this like toy shop, I guess it was. Um, and then you have, um, you know, Kate does defeat him with the trick arrows as they're all littered on the ground there. And she's able to activate one that kind of sets off all of them. And, you know, he gets incapacitated, uh, He's laying something on the ground. I guess you're thinking he's supposed to be dead, but we'll see later on when the cops come in that he's not in the room anymore. So then we have Eleanor arrested by police for Armand's murder. Apparently, Kate is the one that called them there. And what I liked about this is the conversation she has with uh, Eleanor, Kate, that Kate has with Eleanor. Eleanor says, is this what heroes do? Arrest their mothers? Arrest their mothers on Christmas Eve? And I, I said aloud while I watched it, I said, yes, that is what heroes do. If their parent is somebody that's bad, uh, they take them down. Uh, and, I, you know, we've seen that with other superheroes that have had you know, versions of their parents or coming from bad backgrounds. And actually, we're going to kind of see that with Maya Lopez and Kingpin in a little bit here. They're not really, you know, family, but the way, you know, she caught him uncle and she's been around him since she was a child. But Kate doesn't answer the question, but it the answer is yes. You know, if your mom is doing something that bad, she killed Armand, she's working with you know, uh, a gangster within Kingpin? The answer is yes. Kate, Kate's doing what is right. And that is what is right at that time. It's taking down the person who did something wrong. It's not playing favorites. You know, it's not like... And, you know, people might say, well, then why can Cap save Bucky after he killed all those people? The difference there is Bucky was, you know... Uh, hypnotized or mind controlled, whatever you want to say. This is Eleanor acting in her right mind. Now she may have been kind of stuck. You know, if let's say after, uh, let's say it's true that, you know, um, Kate's dad owed money to Wilson Fisk. I'm guessing after the funeral or whatever, he introduces himself and says, Hey, your husband owed me this much money. What are you going to do about it? Well, if she doesn't have the money, she might have to offer her services to him. And at that point, she is kind of stuck. And you can kind of see where Eleanor is coming from in that regard. But with how rich they've been, from what we see, there had to have been a time that she would have been able, after all this time, Again, we're talking like 12 years in universe, by the way. You know, we're talking about a time where she should have been able to probably pay it off at that point and get out. Um, now, again, you know, it depends, though. Maybe she did pay him back and Fisk is just like, hey, you're under my employment now. You can't leave. We don't really know the full dynamics of what that is. But to me, Kate still did the right thing. You know, she got her mother arrested when her mother had done bad things. And she loves her mom. She still does. But it doesn't mean that she doesn't have to pay for her crimes. And that's what being a hero is. So yes, Eleanor, that is what heroes do. 
So then we get the, you know, the battle on the ice, right? Uh, where they're going to take down all of the tracksuit mafia using uh, arrows. Some people said that it looks like they killed people. I don't think so. I think they shot them all. You know, they're both very good shots. They're going to shoot them where it's not anything that's going to kill them. It's just going to um, incapacitate them. Now, Jack Duquesne, I'm not sure. I mean, he was uh, using a sword, tearing some people up. So I'm not really sure uh, if he killed people or not. But it was great to see Jack, you know, just loving it and Kate coming around to him. And, you know, it, it was just really great to, you know, he, Tony Dalton is so good as Jack Duquesne. And Tony Dalton was really great in this show and uh, just very charismatic. I didn't want him to be a bad guy and he wasn't. So I'm very happy that that's how that it turned out. Hopefully we see him again in something. So we do get Kingpin escaping from the toy shop or, you know, wherever he was hit into. And he's going to run into Maya. Maya's going to pull a gun on him. And the camera's going to pan up and we're going to get a shot. Now, I don't think Kingpin is dead. I don't think you bring Wilson Fisk, Vincent D'Onofrio, back into the MCU for a, uh, you know, a total screen time of five minutes. Maybe ten minutes from last episode on this one. I don't think you'd do that. So... I do think he'll be back. And apparently uh, in a comic run that I've not read, she does shoot Kingpin and he does survive. So if we are setting up for Echo and where Maya Lopez is going into her series in, I guess, 2022 or 2023, I'm assuming Wilson Fisk survives this gunshot. And that's why you don't see it actually happen. Leaves it up in the air. And, of course, we get, you know, the wrap-up here where Clint is going to return home in time for his family on Christmas. And he brings Kate and Lucky, the dog, who now has a name Lucky, not just Pizza Dog. He returns the watch to Laura, so we were right with that. That is her watch, Agent 19. That means she was Agent 19 in S.H.I.E.L.D., which is a code name in the comics and also typically a character named Bobby Morse Mockingbird in comics though you know they didn't give her that code name here so she's probably just agent 19 and if you leave mockingbird to bobby agent to shield would still be canon i guess it is kind of this tricky situation on how they're handling some of this stuff but it's cool I, you know we were right we kind of figured you know that was the common theory that laura the way she was speaking german the way she kind of said that she would understand whatever Clint has to do, that she's been in this life before as well. So that made sense. Nothing wrong there. And then Clint is going to burn the Ronin suit. He's going to ask Kate for his help with it. And, th and that's the end of the series. We do get a, a, an end credit scene I really enjoyed, by the way, that a lot of people seem to have hated. But the full scene from the musical of, you know, I can do this all day, um, which actually is called save the city on uh, iTunes on the iTunes thing on the CD. Pulled it up here. It's called save the city. Yep. From Hawkeye volume two episodes, four through six. Uh, but yeah, it, it was just fun to kind of see the whole thing. They probably filmed it all at the same time when they were filming episode one and decided to use that. There was rumors of, you know, other cut and credit scenes. One of the uh, directors, I think, said that one of the ideas was showing the miniature, um, the miniature, uh, tracksuit mafia that got shrunk down from the Pim Arrow getting carried away by an owl and um, I guess eaten by the owl. I'm not really sure, but <laughs> I, I enjoyed what we got. 
Um, not everything has to be a tease for the next show or movie. And in fact, I think that's one of the things holding back people from enjoying these as much. We're very lucky. We're very lucky we had got, what, like five or six TV shows this year with five movies, something like that. Let's see, we got Loki, WandaVision, Falcon, Winter Soldier, What If, Hawkeye, that's five shows. And, yeah, four films. So we had nine projects this year. Not everything has to be a setup for the next one. We're kind of at this point now where I feel like people look or, look or get more excited about end credit scenes or teases than the actual thing they're watching. They already want to know just what's next. So I'm actually really glad that the end of Spider-Man No Way Home did the Venom tease and then did an actual teaser trailer of Doctor Strange. That's great. We left that movie mostly talking about No Way Home. But some of these movies, I feel like people walk out and are only talking about the end credit scenes. You know, some of that could be if the movie is good or not. And uh, my main point being is just enjoy what we're getting. You know, if you enjoy, like, stop looking for, I know... You know, Marvel has kind of conditioned us for some of these end credit scenes or looking ahead to what's next. But, you know, we also should be just kind of enjoying what we what we get, like not having to always look forward. It's kind of like, you know, when you keep saying, oh, I can't wait for this movie or I can't wait for that. I can't wait for this game. I can't wait for that. You end up kind of wishing your life away because you're just looking forward to the next thing each time. Instead of in, like enjoying the thing that comes out at the time. So for this, what I'd say is like, uh, you know, a lot of people were upset with this end credit scene because it didn't show anything. It didn't tease anything. They're not always that way. You know, like Spider-Man Homecoming, the end credit scene is uh, Captain America saying like, oh, you waited so long for this and it's nothing. You know what I'm saying? So, Sometimes they're just comedy bits. Sometimes there's something that teases ahead. But ultimately, you need to judge the whole show for how you felt in the whole six episodes. And for me, I enjoyed all six of these episodes, and I really enjoyed the show as a whole. It's probably my favorite Disney Plus show so far. Definitely my favorite Disney Plus show of 2021 with Loki right behind it. But overall... I'm just trying to enjoy a lot of these things a lot more. You know, we, we had people thinking Spider-Man was going to show up in the finale of this because he swung by it at the end of No Way Home. That's nice, but they're not using their next contract obligation for Spider-Man for a quick end credits, or, you know, a quick end credit scene or a quick swing in and save the day. When well, the story is ultimately about Kate and Hawkeye, you know, Kate and Clint doing this themselves it would feel very unearned if spider-man swung in at the end of hawkeye episode six took down the rest of the tracksuit mafia with them and swung away it's a phrase in literature and movies the deutsches machina you know where meaning like the hand of god meaning that something just comes out of left field and Saves the day for him. And that's what that would be. Because there's no hint towards it at all in No Way Home. And there's no hint to it in here. Just the fact that they're taking place at the same time. Is what made people believe that. But as we see. That end scene of Spider-Man probably took place. Still a week or two before this episode. Because the tree falls. <laughs> onto the rink and we're on christmas eve they're not putting a new tree up i don't think after that happens just for up until new year's or whatever they would probably just be like well the tree came down already that's it um 
So, you know, from what we know from Spider-Man No Way Home, it starts in the summer. We see them go back to school. We see them pretty much the main plot ends around November. You know, they get told to take down the Halloween decorations. Um, he goes to see Strange at the end of the movie after the end of the Statue of Liberty stuff because that whole part takes place in like 12 hours from Strange getting trapped to the villains getting sent home. You know, then you have J. Jonah Jameson saying at the end, it's been a few weeks since then. So if we're in like early November and it's been a few weeks, we're looking at end of November, early December, the end of No Way Home, with then Hawkeye taking place the week of Christmas. So that seems to be what they were going for. But ultimately, I think Kingpin will be back. I think we will get D'Onofrio versus Charlie Cox Daredevil again some point in this i hope we get some sort of announcement of either a daredevil show or disney plus movie or a theatrical movie just something to give daredevil his due he's one of the most popular marvel characters and the last film attempt was the ben affleck what 2003 movie then you had the disney plus show i mean the the netflix show which did well but You know, Netflix series never wanted to put these characters in the suits. It really drove me mad. You know, he gets a cool red suit and then season three goes back back to the black suit, which is just like a ninja costume. That I'm really excited to see what the Marvel Studios do. Give them more comic accurate costume. Give them something that'll look really good because Daredevil has a really great costume. There's rumors of him appearing in some of the upcoming series. That'll be nice. But eventually I want him to have his own project where he's able to go up against D'Onofrio once again. And where that leaves us for this show. I would love a season two focusing just on Kate. I think Clint should be retired out of the game unless if he's going to be like a man in the chair type of situation where she can call him the way that he called Laura in this series. But, yeah, I think a season two is possible, and I think it'd be a great way to continue Kate Bishop's story until we get to see her in some sort of movie or some sort of team-up or something. But ultimately, that's that's where I stand on this. I think it's a really great series. And now, going forward, right now, I don't know what's next, right? We, we, we think it's Moon Knight sometime early next year or middle of next year we're not really sure and then we probably have she hawk and then probably you know the late summer um series of miss marvel that we're looking at along with you know dr strange in may thor in july i think and then black panther 2 in november that's kind of where we're going into next year uh with only three films and uh, a couple series that we're going to be looking at for 2022 so right now where that leaves us for this show is uh i am looking to have jack on sometime in the next few weeks we're gonna do create your own mcu trilogy and also rank the trilogies that have already existed you know which one's better um but create your own trilogy meaning like if you take a movie like civil war And then, like, Infinity War and Endgame and say, that's our trilogy, right? Because there's a common thread throughout those three movies of the, um, you know, the fallout of Tony and Cap. And how that kind of starts in Civil War. Then we go into, you know, Infinity War, where they're broken up, as Tony says at the beginning. And then into Endgame where, you know, once Tony is saved by Captain Marvel and they have a conversation, how all that stuff comes out again. And then how they have to end up working together and getting past it. That is kind of what we're doing. Not just taking three movies and say, this is it. But taking movies that have plot lines that can sync up and say, this is the trilogy I'm making out of these 20-some movies that exist. And that is what we're going to be trying to do. Create your own MCU trilogy that we're going to be going forward with. And then we'll also rank 
the trilogies that actually are defined, you know, the Spider-Man home trilogy, the Captain America trilogy, Thor, Iron Man, stuff like that. But yeah, so that that's kind of the stuff that we'll be looking forward to. Um, and then maybe even something with some of the animated series or or some comics I've been reading, stuff like that to kind of tide us over to whenever we get and you know, whenever we get news, like I guess whenever we get a release date for some of these series, I'll come back on here and talk about that at some point. Um, but I hope everyone has a good holiday. You know, I know Christmas is over, but you know, if you celebrate any additional holidays and you know, we're getting up the new year's now, hope everybody has a safe holiday and we will see you next time. Thanks for listening. And if you want to reach out to us, let us know your thoughts on the shows you can reach us on Twitter at TO Infinity Saga, Facebook.com slash Infinity Saga Beyond, or email us Marvel Plus Recaps at gmail.com. Thank you once again for listening and have a great rest of your week.